Oh yeah, I know that it is a level up. I'm always messing up, so are the people in it. I got no time for no games, yeah. All they be selling is pain, yeah. The hand that you give, watch them take it. You made it, you thought you were safer. All the money you making them stack. But you, you ain't getting that back. So you sit, let the demons attack. While I sit with my peace, let them fight on my behalf. If it's for me, then who be against me? No one, no one. If it's for me, then who be against me? No one, no one. If it's for me, then who?
I'ma slow it, I'ma say it again This time please read it, don't leave it, I'm ready The kingdom of God is at hand He's repent of your sins The man with a pen, yeah Talking to God while he's writing it down It was worse cause they wanted him dead, yeah What pushes a man who go talk about a life that he's never seen and never lived, yeah What pushes a man who go speak with his chest No one ups in the crowd while him dead, yeah Just please pick up that bucket It's never regular, I'm on a schedule, yeah I know that it is a level up I'm always messing up, so are the people in it I got no time for no games, yeah All they be selling is pain, yeah The hand that you give, watch them take it You made it, you thought you were safer All the money you making them stack But you, you ain't getting that back So you sit like the demons attack While I sit with my peace, let them fight on my behalf If it's for me, then who be against me? No one, no one If it's for me, then who be against me? Time and I didn't know me. I was in a place I was fighting demons. Got me right, told me leave them. You can't go back to that season. You can't go back to that season. If it's for me, then who be 
against me. No one, no one. If it's for me, then who be against me? No one, no one. If it's for me, then who be against me? No one, no one. If it's for me, then who be against me? No one, no one. If it's for me, I'm running it back. On the field, all I know is attack. I'ma catch it, don't care about the cash. We ahead, here, we don't need no advance. When I threw it, it went right of your head. Most of them don't even hear what he said. I'ma slow it, I'ma say it again. This time, please read it, don't leave it on red. It's never regular, I'm on the schedule, yeah I know that it is a level up, I'm always messing up So are the people in it I got no time for no games, yeah All they be selling is pain, yeah The hand that you give, watch them take it You made it, you thought you were safer All the money you making them stack But you, you ain't getting that back So you sit, let the demons attack While I sit with my peace, let them fight on my behalf If it's for me, then who be against me? No one, no one If it's for me, then who be against me? Time and I didn't know me. I was in a place I was fighting demons. Got me right, told me leave them. You can't go back to that season. You can't go back to that season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
it's for me, then who be against me? No one, no one. If it's for me, then who be against me? No one, no one. If it's for me, then who be against me? No one, no one. If it's for me, then who be against me? No one, no one. If it's for me, I'm running it back. On the field, all I know is attack. I'm a catcher, don't care about the cash. We ahead, we don't need no advance. When I threw it, it went right of your head. Most of them don't even hear what he said. I'ma slow it, I'ma say it again. This time, please read it, don't leave it on red. Hand. Your pen your the man with a pen, yeah. yeah. Talking to God while he's writing it down. It was worse cause they wanted him dead, yeah. What pushes a man who go talk about a life that he's never seen and never led, yeah. What pushes a man who go speak with his chest, no one ups in the crowd with him dead, yeah. Just please pick up that book, yeah. Regular, it's never regular, I'm on the schedule, yeah I know that it is a level up, I'm always messing up So are the people in it I got no time for no games, yeah All they be selling is pain, yeah The hand that you give, watch them take it You made it, you thought you were safer All the money you making them stack But you, you ain't getting that bad So you sit like the demons attack While I sit with my peace, let them fight on my behalf If it's for me, then who be against me? No one, no one If it's for me, then who be against me? Man, I didn't know me. I was in a place I was fighting demons. Got me right, told me leave them. You can't go back to that season. You can't go back to that season. Amen. So God bless you. I'm glad to be back with everyone. YouTube, y'all know the drill. If you can hear me well, put a thumbs up in the chat. That way we don't get too far along. And he said, I can't hear. The volume's too low. <laughs> so go ahead, help us out from the start. That way we can make sure everybody's good. And then we'll start moving. That looks good, sweetie. Thumbs up, hands up. Leslie Jones, God bless you. Jeremiah, Emmy, Adrian, Alicia. Shout out to all you beautiful people. Jerrica. Oh, Justin, what's going on, man? Bless you. Bless you, man, I got. Amen, Kevin. <laughs> We're in a new season. God's doing a new thing. <laughs> all, all around. It was only right after we whipped the devil like that last week to do something. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Perfect. So let's rock. So this is basically what we're doing. Is this is going to be not a continuation. So we're not going to deal with sexual sin and any of those dynamics tonight. But... What we need to understand is that, and I've said this before, deliverance or casting out devils is the beginning of deliverance, but it's not deliverance. If you cast a devil out of a person, but that person has had that devil for 100 years, that person has been conditioned and discipled and under the tutelage of that in a way where they will turn back to that way or continue in that way if they aren't made whole. So when we talk about renewing the mind, the mind has to be renewed so that way we can walk in freedom. That way people can walk and hold us. Or as the word of God says in many different ways, it talks about the renewing of the mind. It talks about the washing of the water, the word. All of these things are of the utmost importance. That way deliverance can be sustained. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so what we'll do, we're going to go through a few scriptures, not a lot, 
but we'll go through a few scriptures and oh you know what they can't see because it's on the opposite side so mm-hmm. we'll flip it next time and I also said you put Kofi but you placed the water mm-hmm. you put three rows all caps yeah thank you beautiful so yes talking about renewing the mind but I think last week was good I think last week was a kickstart into what people need, which is freedom. And what people needed to be made whole. Mm-hmm. It's not enough just to cast the devil out. People had to be made right here. Mm-hmm. Because if this isn't right, you'll go right back to what you did before. That's the guarantee. Even the word of God tells us, it says, hey, when a spirit leaves, it goes about in roams and dry places and it searches for seven other spirits that are much stronger than it. And then it comes back to take over its house. Mm-hmm. But in this case, we're going to ensure that the house is swept clean and that not only is the house swept clean, but the word of God is there as the strong anchor. Mm-hmm. Even you have to consider when we talk about the mind, the word of God says that you do what? You put on the helmet of salvation. Mm-hmm. So you have to put on the helmet of salvation. Why? So you can protect your mind. Amen. Okay. So we say it in a very cliche way. Like, oh, I just put on my helmet of salvation. No, you have to put on the helmet of salvation because the enemy wants to attack your mind. Mm-hmm. You understand? Excellent. So, yeah, I think last week was a good kickstart, and I'm grateful. So there's been tested, like, when I say every day, and I was just sharing this with them, typically I don't check the analytics on the videos, but even when I do check them, it kind of varies. Somebody may watch 10 minutes and it drops off. They may just find the part that they're looking for. This is the first video with the exception of Unlock the Voice of God. Those two videos, 95% have watched it the entire way through which means people are sitting for four hours, five hours, however long necessary. So what's happening? Their hearts are being convicted. Their hearts are being captured, and they're getting the freedom that they need. Mm -hmm. And I know it because people are in turn coming back to my inbox and sharing, I watched the entire thing, and I just finished manifesting. I just finished getting freedom or whatever they're saying, Mm -hmm. all these different dynamics. And so this is of the utmost importance that now we help people take the next step into being made whole. And it's, this is one of those more practical things. This is one of those more simple things. This is one of the more true things. And you've heard me say things like this before. A lot of times what happens is when we start dealing with the mind, the mind has to be strengthened or the mind has to be stewarded in such a way where it cannot be given captive to the enemy. So when I say the mind not given captive to the enemy, what happens is if this thing isn't fortified, the enemy now has a way that he can attack. And then your thoughts turn into imaginations. Your imagination turns to your heart. Your heart leads you to wickedness, mm-hmm. right? That's what Jesus said, or that's what God said when he says, when he talked about in Genesis 6, he says, seeing the thoughts of their imaginations and how evil is continually in their hearts. Mm-hmm. So it's a process. It starts within the mind. I watched it three times. Amen. Excellent. It starts within the mind. And it works through the thought process. That thought process also works into imagination. That imagination works into the heart. That heart leads you to action. So it's never that you just fell. You've been walking down a path and a series before you got to that point. And this is why renewing the mind is so important. So we, we got a lot of testimonies. I mean, people here the STDs, people here the fibroids. Carl is in here. His, his fiance was in there. What did I say at the end? I said... There are several women, and the Spirit of God says that you have five brothers, and you think they came generationally or by another way, but the way they entered you is that a spirit came to join itself to you. Now, I have children in the room, so you understand what I'm saying when I say that. Mm -hmm. A spirit came and it joined itself to you, and it deposited this into your body. Go to the bathroom now. God is freeing you. Mm -hmm. People go into the bathroom dispelling that stuff right out of their bodies. Mm -hmm. Right? Dispelling it right out of their bodies. Now, I'm going to talk about this tonight, talking about the thoughts of God. But when God spoke that to me, it came first by my thought. Mm -hmm. But the reason it came by my thought is because I have the mind of Christ, so I have his thoughts. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Take time to understand what I'm saying. That came to my thoughts because I have the mind of Christ. So my, you know, where you may think like, oh man, I don't know what this is, or your thoughts are different. No, my thoughts of what is good, what is lovely, what is of a good report. I have the mind of Christ. What does he say? His ways are not our ways, and his 
thoughts are not our thoughts, which means that we have the ability to tap into God's thoughts. So it came by virtue of thought. That thought then was confirmed and I said, hey, go do this. So eventually we'll talk more about it, dreams, thoughts, because even when you talk about dreaming, dreaming is a portion where you're dreaming, which you don't realize is you're dreaming, but you don't realize thoughts are coming to you that are making you dream. Literally, that's what's happening. There's a spiritual faculty where, so we got the super chat going on. So we, we making big progress. I wanted to see y'all see that. <laughs> My daughter put a $5 in the chat. God bless you. But I want see, so we got the super chat. So we, um, yeah, what well, a super chat. Hey, the, the sexual sentence will push us over the top. Yeah. YouTube said, Hey, you need a super chat. I didn't even meet the qualifications for it. But what happened was the video was watched that long. Somebody said 95% of people watched it that entire time. So you talk about 1,500, 1,300, 1,500 views. Next day later, YouTube sends me the thing that hey, you've been, uh, you've been given access to the uh, partner program. And we didn't show up for that. But we're going to get, you know, what they say, the wealth of the wicked stored up for we finna get that money, okay? <laughs> We finna turn up, so we receive your giving in the name of the Lord Jesus, all right? <laughs> it's exciting because y'all see the progress with us. That, that's, what, that's what makes it exciting. That's amazing. My eyes are glued. That's right. That's right. What happened was people, like, and I, I've said this before, that Carl said it right there. That's the one whose fiance was healed of the fibroids. That's Officer Carl. Carl said, he said, that's amazing. My eyes were glued. I think I blinked twice. One thing that I do know is that there's a spiritual grace with me that if you listen long enough, it will be like a fish that gets a hook in his mouth. You're not getting off of it. It's just what it is. And there's, and I'm not the only one that carries that grace. There's other men like myself who carry that grace that if you listen to them, if you get them enough time, you're like, boom. Then next thing you know, you listen to you driving at work. You listen to them when you go to sleep. You listen. To, I had people message me say, "Hey, man, I put the Travis Sexton center while I was sleeping it was getting delivered." Yeah. Literally, hey, man, I just went ahead and played it while I was sleeping. Mm-hmm. People, hey, man, I was playing it while I was working. So that it's a spiritual, it's a spiritual facet. Remember, I taught you about favor. Mm-hmm. Favor has a thing that hangs over you that everyone can't see, but it compels the other person, mm-hmm. like the children of Israel. So he says, "Go tell them to give you the gold and the silver. Ask them, can you borrow it?" But they weren't coming back. <laughs> So what kind of juju was over top of them to say, hey, man, let us get your gold, silver, and you know they're not coming. Take everything. Take the garments, take the gold, take the silver. That's what favor is. Favor allows you to operate in such a manner where people are compelled on your behalf in ways that don't make sense. It doesn't make sense for someone to sit there and watch for five hours, but they do. Why? They're compelled. But there's something over me that's just not me. My friend played one of the videos this week and received tongues. Right there, that's what I'm saying. There's a grace that goes along with it. Excuse me. That's what I'm talking about. So, <laughs> I know. Come on with the super chat. Amen. <laughs> See, look at that. I've been doing that since the first video of it dropped, and I found you on TikTok. Amen. Now, I can't, because I'm, I have it on the monitor, I can't see it on there, but I'll just show you. Everyone who found me, I can almost guarantee you they found me, either Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. But once they heard one thing, they may have watched two other things, but that was it. And then they were hooked. And it happens that way. Um, what's her name? Uh, my daughter, Domina, tell you. Justin didn't listen to me. Right? However, he was, always, he was just kind of like one way or the other. Right? Not, not anti-Jason, but just one way or the other. However, he, he sat down one day. All it took was 10 minutes. Like, wait a minute. This is what you've been listening to right here? And then, you know, I got teachings for days. This brother caught up and beat her on all the teachings. Oh, yeah, I, I didn't cut that. I, cut. I mean, he teaching her stuff off the teachings. Right? That's, that's the grace that comes along with I'm hooked, stuck like Chuck. So what people don't realize is that grace is the grace of John the Baptist, the spirit of Elijah. John will be in the wilderness but people would have to go see him. We imagine it as though John was standing off the coast and he was shouting and everyone heard him. Mm-hmm. That's not how it was. John was in the wilderness and people were compelled to go hear him. Mm-hmm. So even when God sent me as a prophet to the nations, 
most times, and I've traveled to the nations, but God corrected me that that's not how I was going to do it. God said, I would set you in a place and I will bring the nations to you. That was how he would fulfill my calling as a prophet to the nations. He would set me in a place and he would bring them to me. So what I say, hey, man, I don't think I'm going to be doing much traveling no more unless God sends me like, hey, go here, go here, go here. I'll set with this every day. I probably won't do much international travel unless God sends me. Yeah, boy, I was done locked in ever since we in there. See? And then somebody shared it with somebody. That's We literally see, we just seen the beginning of the phase that we're going to look up one day and be like, hey, man, you remember when there was 10 people in the chat? And then you remember, <laughs> and then you remember we did the, the trap of sexual sin and then it just blew up. And then, and then we got the super chat, and then we're going to look at one day we can't even participate in the chat. I know, because it goes too fast. It's going to be like, brrr, forget it, man. <laughs> and we'll be watching everybody new, and then one day I'll go off the face of the radar. That's what people don't realize. That's the plan. We're going to build people up, build people up, build people up, build people up, and then one day all of this won't exist. Because the nations will rage against their God, a rage against our God. Make no mistakes about it. This is fun right now because of the conditions of what we have. But the nations will gather against the Lord and his Christ and rage a vain thing against him. And what we know now, we won't know in the same way. Right. So download your teachings while you can. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So people have been getting big breakthrough. Big breakthrough. And I didn't even get to get through all of the teaching. Like... But I told you, I said, as long as grace is there, the empowerment to do a thing is all that matters. That's all you need. So we could have taught about anything at that moment, but grace wouldn't have been there. Why? The thing that God wanted to deal with was sexual sin. So because we were dealing with that, that gives grace for that moment. It was kind of like when we taught Unlock the Voice of God. We could have taught anything. But if you teach what God gives for that moment, grace which is empowerment comes behind that yeah, yeah. that's why you never see me like oh next week we're gonna do this then next week we're gonna do this then next week we're gonna do this hey man you set me see from free from 29 years of sexual slavery yeah. may jesus be glorified yeah. i'll be listening to your teacher hey that officer carl said he's a state trooper he said man i pull people over i pause your teaching then i go deal with them and i cop back in and i press <laughs> me. he said and then he said i started telling the whole i started telling the entire squadron, hey, man, y'all need to get on this. I start telling my sergeant and everybody. So next time I get pulled over, I need a man of God to pull me over. <laughs> so he can have mercy, grace, and favor. Yeah. Hey, man, are you, are you considering streaming? In the future, I'm going to take these and send them to all of the different platforms. That way people can listen without having to be a captive audience to YouTube. But it will go to YouTube first because they're showing the most love. They're showing the most love. That's right. Someone will have to sneak and listen to the prophets. Yes. So that, that's the grace of John the Baptist, which is the spirit of Elijah. Mm -hmm. That's what compels people like that. To me to be in the middle of nowhere, yet people be drawn in a way. Yeah. Right? So now when we talk about people breaking free from that, when I tell you the testimonies have been like bananas, like stuff, you'd be like, only God could do that. Especially in the dynamic of, it's one thing in a room where people are conditioned. They know, oh, I'm going to throw up, I'm going to burp, I'm going to this, I'm going to that. You're talking about people that don't have a clue about none of those things. Right. Okay. I need to put this on. Do not, uh, do not disturb. <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't get to teach everything, but I will say this because someone... This was the one question I got. They asked about the sexual dreams and about soul ties. I'm going to teach about dreams soon, so we'll just add that into it rather than, because then we might open a whole can of worms <laughs> if we go there tonight, so we're not going to do that. I think tonight's going to be a shorter night with God's grace, but we're going to do it in, in the near future with the next three to four weeks with God's grace. Yeah, well, I, t I told you, every, we getting we getting better every so often. We're gonna be getting better. Now, we didn't get to talk about the the dreams portion, but I will say this in regards to the soul ties because we're talking about renewing the mind. 
what I want you to know is that a lot of the things take the battery saving off. A lot of the things that you've been taught aren't always wrong, mm -hmm. but it takes spiritual men to teach spiritual things. Amen. That's the that's the best way I could put it. Yeah. It takes spiritual men to teach spiritual things, yeah. which is why you don't ever hear me teaching about how to be a pastor. Mm -hmm. You don't hear me teaching about how to keep people and how to. Why well, I don't have a clue. Cause it ain't my grace, yeah. right? The moment I try to talk about it, it could sound good, but there's no empowerment behind it, mm -hmm. no empowerment with it. So when we talk about the renewing the mind, I didn't get a chance to deal with the soul ties, but I can tell you quickly, I was challenging Janika and she was downstairs right now. I said, Hey, tell me about soul ties. And we were just having a good, it was a general conversation. We didn't dive deep in it. And what do we know about soul ties? Most people say, Oh, when you, when you sleep with a partner, you have a soul tie, right? Oh, this happens, and I'm sure you've heard that. Every person you've been with, now you got to tie to their, uh, you got to tie to their soul, so forth and so on. How many, how many of us have heard that? Yeah. Now I'm going to show you something just to show you that it takes spiritual men to teach spiritual things. Okay. Let's go. Bless you. Thank you. I'm going to find this one, John. That way you ain't got to search through it. Y'all hold on one second. I'm looking for a scripture and I didn't want to trouble. I didn't want to trouble John. Let's go to first Corinthians six. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. And John, I want you to read from. Thirteen. Yeah, First Corinthians six, thirteen to twenty. Uh, let's do New King James, because the Amplified may take us a little, little out of what reach or what we're trying to. An emotional attachment. Yeah, let's do thirteen to twenty. God will destroy both it and them. And now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a holic? Certainly not. Or do you not know that? That he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her. For the two, he, sh he says, shall become one flesh. Okay, but back that up. So he says it right here. What? Do you not know that your bodies are the members of Christ? What shall I shall then I take the members of Christ and make them members of an harlot? God forbid. Now pick up back to verse 16. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her. Okay. Now, is he one body or is he one soul? One body. Does it say one body or one soul? One body. No, I said it takes spiritual men to teach spiritual things. Now, pick back up. It's, he tells us, though, the one who joins himself to a harlot has become one flesh, is what that truly means. What does he say? When a man 
shall leave his father and his mother, and the two shall become one flesh. flesh. Go ahead, pick back up. For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. He says it again. The two have become one flesh. Not one soul. One flesh. He didn't say that a portion of that soul joins to that soul. He said that the two have become one flesh. Go ahead. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. So now he tells us that not only the one who joins himself to Harlot isn't tied in the soul, he's tied in the flesh. But the one who is with the Lord, he's one spirit yes. with the Lord Jesus. People don't talk about that. Being one spirit with him. Yes. You understand? Yes. Why? So when I think, we talk about renewing the mind, mm -hmm. my mind, because of my meditation, because my heart being set upon him, but because my one spirit with him, I have his thoughts. I have his mind. I have his ways. Yes. I have his imaginations. Yes. I have his desires. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I'm one spirit with him. Yes. Yes. You understand? Yes. Now, I'm not negating what you've been taught about soul ties, but just take what I'm saying and read between the lines. It mm -hmm. takes spiritual men to teach spiritual things. Mm -hmm. They got a whole book called Prayers of Our Demons, and the first thing they tell you to renounce is soul ties, but you don't break anything within the flesh. That's mm. mm. almighty. Wow. And bless the man of God. God used them in a tremendous way, but what? Yes. It takes spiritual men to teach spiritual things. Mm -hmm. not. And I'll help you understand. When a man <laughs> is separated from God, at the day of judgment. His spirit leaves his body. Mm -hmm. When his spirit leaves his body, it returns to God. The reason it returns to God is because it's on lease. Yes. Mm -hmm. Every spirit belongs to him. Yes. The spirit is how we communicate with him. Yes. It's how we interact with him. Yes. Remember I said that in unlocking the voice of God, how we communicate spirit to spirit. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when I say I heard God, I didn't hear him here. Mm -hmm. I heard him here. Yes. I heard him here. Why? Because I have his thoughts. I have his heart. I have his imagination. I have his spirit. Yes. I'm one spirit with Jesus. Yes. You understand? Yes. And we're going to talk tonight about thoughts and imagination and the heart because all of it works together through the soul. Yes. But the way it works is that you have a spirit that's leased from God. Mm -hmm. Then the man who received God receives a new spirit. Yes. What? He will put a new spirit within us. That spirit calls us to be one spirit with him. Yes. But the man who's separated from God, that spirit leaves him and goes back to God. Mm -hmm. So if you take a, let's say a Hitler, mm -hmm. I'm almost certain Hitler didn't repent. Mm -hmm. And at the day of his judgment, his spirit left his body, returned back to God. Mm -hmm. The only thing left was his body and his soul. His body went into the ground physically. His soul went into hell. Mm -hmm. Now Hitler, let's just use him for an example, but let's just say, understanding that dynamic, the body, the soul, and the spirit. Mm -hmm. The spirit, we're talking about a man separated from God, and I'm using this to just teach you spiritual things. Oh, the spirit gets separated from man, it returns back to God. Mm -hmm. Once that spirit is separated, man has no more communion with God. He has no ability to cry out to God. He has no ability to communicate with God. Mm -hmm. He can cry out with his mouth, but God will not hear him. Why? He doesn't have the connection source anymore. Yes. What some would say, the New Agers would say, oh, he doesn't have the, the all source. Mm -hmm. That's gone. Mm -hmm. When that source is removed, he can cry out. What did the young man say when he was in hell? I cried out to God. Please send somebody. Tell our brothers. Could you please just bring me a drop of water? Yes. Right? Please just bring me a drop of water. This means people on the other side had water. Yes. Mm -hmm. They had access to it. Mm -hmm. yes. Could you please just dip your finger in the water and just touch my tongue because I'm tormented by this flame. Mm -hmm. Now, why would he be tormented if his body's in the ground? Mm -hmm. Because the soul is material just as, as much as it's immaterial. Yes. It's just transitioned from out of this realm into that realm. And in that realm, you feel everything. Yes. That's why I said if someone starts talking in their dream, talk about, yeah, I pinch myself. Shut up. I already know you don't know anything. I already know, I already know you, you, you're dealing in the shallow realms because it doesn't work that way. So now back to what I was saying. You have the spirit that leaves the body. It returns back to God. Yes. The physical body gets cast into the ground. Mm -hmm. 
But remember, that body is also spiritual because it will decompose. But on the day of judgment, it will arise again. Mm. Thanos style. You mean he snapped that finger? Everybody disintegrated, right? Yeah. They put it back together. Well, everybody came back together again. Yeah. You think they make this stuff up out of nowhere? No. Remember, I said with the imagination, everything that's imagined because it exists. No man can imagine anything that's not within existence. All things were created by him and for him. Mm-hmm. Yes. You understand? Yes. So now, that spirit goes back to God. The body goes in the ground. That soul is who you truly are. Mm-hmm. And the soul has a body also. That's why there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Mm-hmm. Why? When they call Samuel up, he says, hey, man, I see a man and he's clothed. He has on a mantle. This means that spiritually you can be clothed or you can be naked. Mm. spiritually you can be clothed or you can be naked mm. so when people talk about Elijah like oh man where his mantle fell well they didn't realize Elijah had another mantle oh. that was physical Elijah's mantle he didn't give it up mm. so that's how some people preach like oh if you lose your mantle this no, no. Elijah's mantle <laughs> was still with him today any spiritual man who understands spirituality understands Elijah still has his mantle right now yes. wow. right now so what happens the spirit, the soul, and the body. The soul is left to interact in the spiritual world because now that soul no longer has the bounds of the flesh. Yes. It's no longer limited by this flesh. But while it's not limited by this flesh, we start making up things like, oh, this soul tie, this soul tie, this soul tie, this soul tie, right? Mm-hmm. Now, when you take a person, if they died in fornication, right? If they died unrepentant of their sin away from God, that person is separated from God. But in their soul, they're cast down into hell. Every lover that they've been with is not there with them. Mm. So how is their soul tied? Mm. If their soul was tied, those other ones would be there with them. Well then, well then. If their soul was tied, there'd be a portion of them that exists with them. Bring it home. And I understand spiritual dynamics. Even David talked about it. He said, he delivered my soul from Sheol. Mm -hmm. So there's facets and factions that can be separated from us at a moment. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about the the once and all done death. Mm -hmm. When that happens, that person isn't joined to any other lover. Mm. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. Once again, like I said, it takes spiritual men to teach spiritual things. (laughs) Hold on a second. I I missed all of that. So whatever y'all saying, God bless you. (laughs) Because all that rolled through so quick. But now, what happens is the soul has desire. Mm -hmm. What people don't understand about the soul is the soul has deep desire. But the soul doesn't know the difference. The soul doesn't know the difference between if it's eating cake or if it's eating pie. What the soul knows is the sentiment that it feels and it desires for that expression to be given to it or desires to express itself in that way mm-hmm. or is looking for that sentiment. So what happens is you tie yourself in the flesh with people. Your soul enjoys the feeling that your flesh get. So it equates your flesh tie with that individual. Mm-hmm. Your flesh is tied to them, not your soul. But your soul doesn't know the difference if it's you or if it's your ex. Your soul knows this feeling that I get here is what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. That's why if you look at a crackhead, they know they shouldn't be doing it, but they will put a rock to their mouth. Why? They're looking for a feeling. The soul doesn't know whether it's crack or whether it's the cream from an Oreo cookie because they're both just as dangerous. Mm -hmm. That's what the studies say. You take the Oreo cookie and the rock that gets cooked down both of them are just as dangerous. Oh, the soul doesn't know the difference in between the two. Mm-hmm. The soul knows I'm looking for this sentiment right here. Yes. And if the soul has the Oreo from that cracker, he might say, hey, that's not enough. I need more. Mm-hmm. But it's not that the soul is like, hey, man, give me that, give me that, give me that. No, it's looking for an expression. It's looking for a feeling. The soul, that's why it says what? Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. But if you try that in the physical realm, it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. That's spiritual language. That's language from out of the realm of the soul. That's language from out of the realm of the spirit. Taste and see that he is good. Now, I'm Oreo. now I would just use the Oreos as a joke. So don't, <laughs> don't, don't become an Oreo Nazi. 
I Matter of fact, so put, put a super chat in there so we can go get some double stuffs when we're done. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm to put crack cookies. Yeah, don't, don't, be, don't be a Nazi. <laughs> So in a lot of ways, what people are trying to say is that the soul is looking for expression. That person's flesh is tied to that person. So they communicate that expression with that person that they've experienced. But it's not that their soul is tied to that person that they've experienced. Because if the soul finds something, if the flesh finds something better, the soul will forget about that person and say, we want that now. Mm-hmm. Why do you, remember I told you about lovers and why we pursue the next greatest thing? Why? The soul has found something that it likes that expression better. It will move on from that next one and say, all right, we're good now. This is what we want. Mm-hmm. It takes spiritual people to teach spiritual things, guys. Ooh. I'm going to eat a few grapes. Oops, is right. No, the flesh is tied. So meaning this physical flesh is spiritual just as, as much as carnal. Mm-hmm. And hold on a second. I was hungry today because I'm waiting on the Lord with my sister. But hold on a second, man. I'm not sure what you know. Amen. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. You shall be filled. Mm-hmm. That's good. May God fill you all the more. Mm-hmm. So no, what I'm saying is that the physical flesh, the physical form, experience pleasure and also experience desires. Mm-hmm. The expression of that though only comes from the soul. Mm-hmm. It comes. The soul is what's desiring that expression. Mm-hmm. It's like if you say, "Man, I really want." Man, I really want some soul food. It's not that you want soul food. The expression is looking for a certain sentiment. That certain sentiment can only be felt within the soul. Mm -hmm. That's why we say soul food. Mm -hmm. Because there's plenty of other choices that are equally as good. Mm -hmm. But they don't give you in the moment the satisfaction that the soul is looking for. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about tying the soul in the flesh... No, your flesh has been discipled by iniquity. Your flesh has been discipled by carnality. Your flesh has been discipled by sin. But its ultimate captain is the flesh. I mean, is the soul. The captain, what, what the man said on dry? Hey, hey, look. I the captain now. Look, look at me. I the captain now. That's the soul inside of the ship. Hijacked. We're the captain now. The soul is steering the ship. Only thing you know is I'm looking for something to satisfy that. So then the flip side of it is that there is some soul work that has to be done. So when we talk about renewing the mind, the mind has to deal with the soul because the mind is the busiest part of the soul. The mind is the one facet that never stops. So then that's when you get in other dynamics with the conscious mind, the subconscious mind, right? They're, they're, they're deep facets. The soul is so deep. That's why I said it takes spiritual men to teach spiritual things. Even when we're talking about this tonight, we can only scratch the surface of this thing. Because if we were to deal with the soul, and we could do another one of those, we could do another one of those five-hour nights and go, and people would be like, oh my gosh, I did not know. This is why you always hear me say, I'm pro, cast the devil out, let's get you a counselor. Yes. I'm pro, cast the devil out, let's get you a psychiatrist. Yes. I'm pro, let's cast the devil out, let's get you a therapist. Mm-hmm. It has to be the right therapist. Has to be the right counselor. Has to be the right psychiatrist. Mm-hmm. But the mind is such a fickle thing. Yes. And spiritual men don't understand it. So then when someone gets hijacked, we can't comprehend how did they get to this point. Mm-hmm. That's because you reduce the helmet of salvation just to a prayer point when it's much more than that. Mm. I just put on my helmet of salvation. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, you're getting bopped upside your head by the enemy. Yes. Try to figure out how you got here. So the new spirit that God gives you, <laughs> unless you have it. Just go out there. <laughs> so is it gratification that the soul seeks? Yes. The soul is looking for satisfaction. That's what it's looking for. It's looking to be quenched. Now we weren't even going to be talking about the soul tonight, but here we are. <laughs> here we are. But the soul is looking for satisfaction. The soul is looking for gratification because the soul is who you truly are. So the soul is who you truly are. And this is the fact that the soul is like a spirit, I guess? The soul is spiritual. 
but it doesn't have like it doesn't have flesh. So this is because it doesn't, it doesn't have, have physical form in this world. Yeah, so that's the reason why it uses it uses this, this as a vehicle to express itself. I got it. Okay, I'm here. I'm picking up what you put down. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> it's what's this form. Okay. So then, and that's what I talked about when I was talking about the alphabet community, the ABCT, LGB, the whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. And I said for those <laughs> who get those who get mutilated or those who go through changes and those kind of things, what happens when the Lord returns? Mm -hmm. Everyone gets reset. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, God didn't come to save the body. He came to save the soul. Yes. Yes. Unto the saving of your souls. Yes. He is the captain of our salvation, the saving of our souls. Yes. Our soul salvation. Why? Mm -hmm. Because it is who we truly are. Yes. Yes. Everything that we express is by virtue of who we truly are on the inside. So you have the, the soul of a body. It has a body, just not in this world. Mm -hmm. Right? That's why when the, 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 the beggar was on one side in Abraham's bosom and the rich man was on another side, that's why they were able to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. He had a physical form. Uh, Samuel coming out of the ground had a physical form. When Elijah and Moses showed up, physical form. Enoch has a physical form. You see? Mm -hmm. Jesus came from out of the grave with a physical form. Yes. Mm -hmm. Although it was spiritual. Mm -hmm. so the, the key is that this thing is deep and don't let shallow people teach you deep things. <laughs> Amen. I'm literally standing up on my couch right now. Hey, Amen. Receive. <laughs> <laughs> the mind. Let me talk about the soul. The mind is the most active part of the soul. This is why the mind has to be brought under the stewardship of the Holy Spirit. Because when it's brought under the subjection of the Holy Spirit, it can now begin to develop his thoughts. There is no thought that exists that's not a spiritual function. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the old cartoons, right? Mm -hmm. You'll see the old cartoons and they would do what? Like, my kids love Tom and Jerry. Like, that's like they think. Mm -hmm. Tom and Jerry and one of them other little silly shows. And I love them, right? But Tom and Jerry, probably the, probably the funnier one. You'll see, which one of the little one? Jerry. Jerry. See, I was, about to mess, I was about to mess it up and say Tom. Jerry. But Jer you'll see Jerry, right? And Jerry be like, all right, I'm finna punish him. And then the little, the little... The little Halo Jerry will pop up and then the little Evil Jerry, evil Jerry will pop up, right? That's how our thoughts are. Mm. Most people don't realize these men understood spiritual things and they were expressing them. Mm -hmm. Every thought you had was influenced and none of it was about over your own accord. Ooh. Every thought. Every thought. Good, bad, or indifferent. No thought you brought about on your own. Mm -hmm. Not one. Why do you think he would have to say, I want you to cast down those things that exalt themselves? Why? Because thoughts are spiritual. Mm. Get your spirit together. I understand. You, you, you're like, oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Olu. That's why we would then, what, have the mind of Christ. Why? Because our thoughts are not our thoughts. Yes. So then when I say, hey, there's three, two or three women... And the Spirit of God says that you have fibroids. Yeah. But the way you got them, you think they came by generations. No, they came by a spirit that brought them to you in a dream. Go use the bathroom now. God is freeing you. Mm -hmm. That came by a thought. But that thought wasn't my thought. I have the mind of Christ. Yes. Every thought you have is by virtue of a spirit influencing you. Mm -hmm. Every thought. Yes. So now, when you have thoughts that are not of God, you can better overcome because you know, this is the wicked one that's influencing me. Yes. When you have thoughts of God, you can know, okay, I'm moving in the vein. Mm -hmm. You understand? So it's not a, it's not a, you, God's thoughts, Satan's thoughts, and your thoughts. Every thought you have is under the virtue of an influence. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, for truth. Thoughts are spiritual. Thoughts of spiritual. Remember, the physical brain is only a physical manifestation of the soul. Mm -hmm. You have the mind. The physical brain represents the mind. The brain moves in patterns by virtue of the soul. 
But how does the soul get influenced if it's spiritual? Mm. Mm. I, I think. <laughs> and I, th- I think we tapped on that. I think I don't. Did we touch on deja vu and unlock the voice of God? Okay. Well, when we do dreams, hold me to it, and I'll teach deja vu. I'll teach what deja vu because even that people don't understand deja vu is a real spiritual thing. They just don't understand how to explain it. Excuse I got me. questions, okay? <laughs> if thoughts are influenced, are we still responsible for them? No, you're responsible for what you do with your thoughts. You're responsible for what you do with your thoughts. Consider this. When Satan came to Jesus to tempt him, John, find that for me. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you guys something. The thoughts being physical, is that why? I'm about to come there, Kevin. I'm, I'm coming down your block right now. Let me spin the block on him. Just spin my block. <laughs> I'm going to interview these while he's getting the scripture. I want you to find the scripture okay. where Jesus was fasting and then the enemy came and he took them to a, he showed them a high place and said, I'll give you the kingdoms of the world. Turn these breads into stone. Mm-hmm. Cast yourself down. He said, hey, the angels will bear me up. That whole discourse. That's what I want you to find for me. In the New King James Version. You too. Are you guys good? If you're good, put a thumbs up in the chat. I want to make sure you guys are tracking with us. I thought you, I thought deja vu was you reliving something that happened in the spiritual realm. Deja you about to mess me up. You about to mess me up. But I'll, t- I'll, I'll drop a little hint, Batman. All things belong to God, past, present, and future. However, to God, it's all on the same timeline. The past is now, the future is already. To God, it's all the same thing. Yes. To God, the past is now. Yes. To God, the future is now. Yes. To God, the present is now. Yes. So God sees in a different way than what we see. Yes. God sees in a different way than what we see. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm trying. I'm holding myself. Let me, I'm holding. My, I'm, I'm, we're gonna save that because I'm gonna go there when we teach about dreams. Man, I still haven't digested the tribe of sexual sin, and you bless us quick, this quick, with another teaching. God bless you, brother. Nice look. Amen. Bless you also. Parallel universe. Don't diamond you about to mess us up. <laughs> Thank you, diamond. But this is what I tell you, diamond. You can ask that question. Save that question for next week. In the mastermind, I'll teach you about the parallel universe. Because that's that's something that has to be talked. We can't talk about that openly. I'll teach you. I, I don't, and it ain't no mutant, ain't no holes bar. We just go for it. So I'll teach, I'll teach you that privately. All right, you good? Yeah. Re- read that for me from the beginning when he, uh, I believe Satan, Satan comes to him all the way to when he tempts him and then he, 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 then he leaves. Then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Yes. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, Afterward, right, he go back for me real quick. started again for me. Then G- this time, read it how we would read it. Okay. Now, normally, I, I'm, I say this every week, but I'm prefacing this for new people who come. When we read these scriptures, we're going to read quick. But the reason we're reading quick is for time's sake. However, when you read the word of God, never read it the way we do in these settings. We're only doing that so you can believe us because we know how people are. Amen. Secondly... We're only doing that for time's sake because we want to get through a passage. And at times you need context to beginning and end and after. Okay? But we're going to take our time as well. I want you to take your time and read how we will read it. Okay. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Now... When the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up 
into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and said him, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. All right. Okay. So, so let, me, let me let me help you. So I want you to back up, yeah. start again. Yeah. But now I'm gonna interject with you. Okay. I just wanted you to read it so we could say we read it. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna teach it. All right. I was I was restraining myself from jumping in there with you. I said I I was ready to just say hey. Let me tell you. But go ahead. Okay. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward, he was hungry. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angel charge over you. Now, listen to this. When he says, now the first thing we need to understand is, how did Jesus get up there? The Spirit led him away. Okay? Okay. When the Spirit leads him away, he's already fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Anybody who's ever fasted 40 days and 40 nights knows the weakness that's within the body. Mm -hmm. When Satan, the tempter, comes to him, then what does he say? He led him up. Yes. Him leading him up wasn't that he took his hand and took him on a journey. Mm -hmm. He took him in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Brought him to a high place and showed it to him and said, hey, let me show you what I can do for you. This was spiritual warfare at its highest level. Mm. Satan waged war with him in his mind. Mm. Mm. Now, trust me, men are going to disagree with me, but they don't know what I know. You ask, any, you ask any fellow prophet who's encountered the things of the Spirit, they will tell you the same thing I'm telling you. He literally had warfare within his mind. So he asked the question, how did, how did Satan, Satan take him up there? He showed him in the spirit. He carried him the same way God carried Ezekiel in the spirit. Mm. We know it's possible. Yeah. We know it's possible. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem that what people don't understand is that they then take one thing, and because this one thing the enemy does, they then damn it as though it's not possible at all. Mm. Or as though that if any Christian goes near, and you always even say that the lines are thin, right? Mm -hmm. That's why we are led by Holy Spirit. Yes. That's why we're led by God. That's why we have the mind of God. That's why we fear God. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So you have this one side of one thing. So this is what the modern day movement would say. Mm -hmm. Oh, if anybody gets carried away in the spirit, that's demonic. Mm -hmm. Yet, God takes Ezekiel by the lock of his hair and lifts him up into the spirit. Mm -hmm. The spirit of God takes him and sets him in a valley of dry bones. Mm -hmm. This is within thought. These are spiritual transactions that are happening. Mm -hmm. Then, so what does the modern day person say? Oh, you can't touch that. You can't touch that. You can't touch that. Mm -hmm. Right? Not knowing that this is something that God has also. Mm -hmm. Remember witchcraft, when I say there's a thin line between the two, witchcraft is light that's perverted. Yes. Mm -hmm. that's, so that's all witchcraft is. Witchcraft is light that has been manipulated. Yes. God, the source of light. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, Men, because they don't understand, say, hey, you can't touch that, not knowing that's just light that's been manipulated, but there's a true source also. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
literally my wife is in photography so you know this and you're a photographer what do y'all do y'all take them prisms and you want to manipulate an image mm -hmm. the image itself is true but you want to manipulate it mm -hmm. the image is pure and true mm -hmm. but because you want to manipulate it you have to use a certain facet to cause that image to appear a certain way mm -hmm. but if you remove that that facet that causes that to appear that way the source is still the source mm -hmm. that's how the enemy tricks people out of spiritual things yes. right there okay. the enemy manipulates light that's what we call witchcraft. Mm -hmm. okay. You picking up what I'm putting down? Okay. Hold okay. on. Center block. The thoughts being spirit is that why the spirit communicates by virtue of thought. Like I'm saying. It, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. I don't want to start none, but I thank God you've done away. Don't don't go too soon, Batman. <laughs> 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 All right. Amen, Sean. It's good to see you, man. I love you. No, so when Jesus takes him up, excuse me, when Satan takes him up, this is the function of the spirit. He's having warfare in his mind. Now I'm going to teach you how you break warfare in your mind. Teach us. The warfare is in the mind. Yes. But in order to break what's in the mind, you have to speak. Mm -hmm. Every time he challenged him, Jesus said, it is written. Yes. Okay. He is hungry, weak, famished. Man shall not live by bread alone. He's breaking the imaginations that are exalting themselves in his own life. Mm. Remember I said, every thought that comes to you is by virtue of a spirit. Mm -hmm. What? But the word of God is what? The discerner of thoughts. Why do you have to discern something to tell of which sort of type a thing is? That's what it means. Find that for me. Come on, y'all not ready. Y'all not, not ready. ready. We here. We're ready. Sure. <laughs> Can you put a pen like one day on mental illness? Yes. Okay. Just remind me, I'll teach it. Because I feel like this is kind of touching Yeah, it's, it's touching a little bit. I don't know if y'all heard it, but she said, can we talk about mental illness? I said, we, we most certainly can. However, I would want to do that the same way we did to Travis Echo Sam. Yeah. Meaning, wait for God to bring me the grace for that moment. That way we can break people free. Mm -hmm. So you looking for what again? The word of God is quick. It's the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. To the dividing of the dividing of sunder of soul and spirit, bone and marrow. It is also a... a it is also a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. You guys don't understand. Like, I want you to listen. Take, take this right here and go back. And you, This is one, if you listen to it, this will enrich you in ways you don't understand. But God can feel the grace of God with it. Just go back and listen to it. The double-edged sword, yes. Sean, Sean, do me a favor. Put that in the chat for us, Sean. I'm coming there, Carl. You you coming right down the block. See, Carl been hanging out, and now all of a sudden he's starting to pull things together. It's grace. Yes. Hmm. Read that for me. Read it slow. Now, what I was saying prior to this, just so we we're setting this up, I was talking about light is light. Witchcraft is light that's manipulated or perverted or bent. But it doesn't change the fact that light is still light. Okay. Now, understanding that light is still light, then we moved back into Jesus being tempted by the tempter. Jesus has already fasted 40 days and 40 nights, weakened. Then it says that he's led up to a high place. And then the tempter says, hey, I will give you this. And he says, and that's how you break the warfare by speaking. Remember, anything that's going to be done in the spirit and you want to manifest naturally it has to be done by words yes. there is no other way I was teaching Carl this today I said he's going through something and I was giving him a prophetic act this is how you deal with this however when you deal with it say this don't just do the act when you do the act say these words why because in order for me to get what I'm trying to get to him from out on the other side of the spiritual world to come here it has to be voice activated that's how it gets on this side. On the other side, 
It does not have to be because thoughts can function as wheels of motion of the spirit. But in order for it to come back on this side, it has to be spoken. So we talk about warfare. We talk about renewing the mind. The mind has to be reset. And in order to reset the mind, it has to hear something. Mm. You understand? Literally, when it talks about the renewing of the mind, the renewing of the mind is a hard reset is what that means. You ever had a phone and you say, hey, man, this joint ain't working. Factory reset. You're good. You're good. It's a factory reset. But once it's factory reset, you have to then bring about it everything necessary so it can now be led into the ways of God. So it can now have the thoughts of God. Yes. All right. Now, I was telling him that the warfare that Jesus experienced wasn't only physical, it was within the mind. And that thoughts are brought about whether evil or good. That's why you need discernment. Why? Not to just guess and speculate. Discernment helps us to determine of what sort a type a thing is. Clean, excuse me, or unclean. So we talk about the discernment of spirits. Most people that talk about discernment don't have discernment. Why? Because discernment allows you to see of what sort a type a thing is. So if a person only talks about devils, they probably don't have discernment. They can probably perceive like, man, just by virtue of something being unclean, you can just perceive that that's unclean. But it's not that you have discernment. Why? You have to be able to determine of what sort the light is. Remember I told you witchcraft is nothing more than light manipulated. Mm -hmm. But it's still light. Mm. Satan goes about as a minister of light. Yes. If you don't have discernment, you can't determine if it's manipulated or not. Mm. Go ahead. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that, that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedient. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Okay, so stop. So the word of God is what? It's living. Living. This is an organism. Okay? The word of God is what? Alive. Yes. yes. This isn't just a facet that's just some nebulous thing. It's a function that's alive. Yes. Okay? And if it's alive, it's a thing. This thing is a person. Mm -hmm. Yes. Go ahead. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit. All right. Yeah. So the word of God will divide between the soul and the spirit. Yeah. Yes. Because there's times where the two have to be separated in order to determine of what sort of type of thing is. Did this come from your soul or did this come from your spirit? Yes. You understand? Yes. Why do you think that they have to separate to get the marrow from out of the bone? Why? They're so cho closely joined together that at times you may not know. Mm. Go ahead, pick back up. End of joints and marrow. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So the word of God discerns. It determines. Remember I said what is discernment? The ability to determine of what sorts or what types a thing is. Clean or unclean. Light or manipulated light. Yes. Holy or unholy. Clean or profane. Yes. The word of God is living and it has the ability to discern the difference between thoughts and in intentions of the heart. Yes. Now read that whole passage again now that we've said that. This right here got my spirit stirred up. Me too. Yes. For, the word of, for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So now, going back to what Jesus was interacting with the tempter. Because then they'll say something dumb like, well, you know, he was physically taking him there. Shut up. You don't know. <laughs> That's what you should do. You should stick to things that you know. And we're going to stick to the things of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Satan was tempting him. This was warfare at its highest level, which is in the mind. Yes. That's why Paul then said, Hey, you had to cast down those things that exalt themselves. If it exalted itself, that means it didn't come from you. Mm. 
Mm. It exalted itself. Itself is an entire separate entity from you. He didn't say that you exalted your thoughts. He said that it exalted itself above the knowledge of God. Yes. Which means that there's a knowledge, but then there's something else that's trying to work itself above that. Mm. But it takes the word of God in order to discern the difference between the two. Yes. Takes the word of God to discern the difference. So when the enemy comes to when the enemy comes to Jesus, excuse me, and he says, I want you to turn these breads and so he says, It is written. He has to say it is written because what? The word of God is discerned between the thoughts and intents of the heart. Yes. Those thoughts are there. How does he discern the difference between the two? He speaks the word. Yes. Now that's for your name and claim it right there. All the word people, you the word. No, the word is for the purpose to, to discern what types of sorts of thing is. Yes. Is it right? Is it right? Boy. That's the purpose of the word. To determine yes. of what sorts or types a thing is. Yes. So Satan says what? Hey, I will give you these kingdoms. Mm-hmm. Don't you know it is written? Clap so back. now when you have warfare, yes. you have the weapon necessary. Why? You speak. So we talked about the trap of sexual sin. You may feel things still stirring in your body. My members are yielded unto righteousness. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. You understand? Yes. Yes. Literally, you have something coming against you. I will be a vessel of honor in the house of God. Yes. Why? I'm speaking because my mind has been renewed. Yes. And as I continually speak, it sets about my heart in which way I will go. Yes. You understand? Yes. But if Jesus doesn't speak... The temptation doesn't go. If Jesus doesn't speak, the tempter doesn't leave. What? Seeing as though he come, he finds nothing in me. This house is swept clean, but it has to be full of the word of God. So we talk about renewing the mind. You have to now, we cast all them devils out. Now you got to fill that house with the word of God. You understand? Yes. You got to be reading the Proverbs so you can get wisdom. You got to be reading the Psalms so you understand how to worship God, how to cry out to him, how to be genuine. When I say things like, hey, man, the things I say, you don't realize they should. Man, be heartfelt. Be sincere before God. Yes. Pray like a child. I'm telling you the Psalms. Yes. I'm paraphrasing the Psalms when I say things like that. Mm-hmm. What am I saying? Hey, I cried unto him in my day of desperation and he heard me. Yes. That's what I'm saying. I'm just saying it in a way that it reached my spirit. Now go back and read that scripture. I'm sorry. This one, Matthew. <laughs> Matthew? Yes. Back to Matthew. Start from the beginning or? Mm-hmm. Okay. Please, but you can read a little faster now. Okay. Then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness oh to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights afterward, he was hungry. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, just so we know, this is this encounter is when before. Mm -hmm. Read it because people will try to trick you out of your position. Mm -hmm. They don't try to trick you intentionally, but they trick you with their old religion and their scared ways. Period. This isn't while Jesus fasting. Afterward, afterward, after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, the tempter came. Yes. You are most weakest at the conclusion of spiritual matters. Mm-hmm. Now go back. Go ahead. Now. God bless you, my brother Kevin. When the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It so is written. He, re- he answered and said. He's dealing with warfare in the mind. In turn, he speaks. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is how you overcome. Yes. You in turn have to speak. Yes. It is written. Yes. Man shall not live by bread alone. Go ahead. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple. Think about it. You think Jesus was going to walk on a journey with him up a high mountain after fasting 40 days and 40 nights? No. <laughs> if it wasn't enough for him to take it the first time, you thought he was going to continue on the journey? No. All right, come on now. Make it make sense. Go ahead. <laughs> and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. 
For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. He's again saying the word. This is why you have to read the word. Every day you should read a song. Every day you should read a proverb. Every day you should read out of the gospel. Every day you should read one of Paul's letters. Every day. Every day. Every day, non-negotiable. Now, every day when you get it done, no. But if you're dogmatic in that way, that word will be rooted in you to sustain you in days where you can't. Amen? Amen. Amen. What'd you say? That's your Bible plan. That's your Bible plan right there. Yes. <laughs> 365 read. <laughs> Jesus said to him, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again, the devil took him up on a seemingly high mountain and show him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him and behold, angels came and ministered to him. If you want the angels, you got to know the word. Amen. You know what I'm saying? If you want the angels, you have to say the word. What the psalm says. Praise ye the Lord, ye his angels who excel in strength. He was commanding the angels what to do. But if you don't know the word, you don't know what to tell them. Mm. You understand? Yes. If you don't know the word, you don't even understand their functions. He said, don't you know that in that day, there will be, you will judge angels? How are you going to judge angels if you don't even know what their functions are? You can't even tell if they did a good job or not. You don't have a clue. You don't have a clue. So then people want to think that we got devils because we talk about angels. And they want to think we got familiar spirits and all that stuff. You won't judge anything. You will dwell in the lower realms of life. I, on the other hand, will be judging angels. That's for me in my house. Yes. Amen. Amen. You understand? We in the house. <laughs> we receive. So what happens? Jesus is dealing with warfare in the mind and he speaks. Yes. So I'm saying what? You have to get the word in you. Why? Because the word moves from the conscious mind to the subconscious mind. That's why when you have the word, you have to read the word. Not. No. Read so you can hear. The word is spiritual. Remember I said if you're going to get anything from the other side of the spiritual world or what we call the world of spirits or the realm of the spirit, if you're going to get it from that side to our side, which is what we consider the world of men or the realm of the flesh, if you're going to get it from that realm to this realm, it's voice activated. That's why he said, rise up and walk. He didn't just look at her and think it. Why? He had to speak it. Yes. But where did he get it from? The other side. Yes. Why? Why? Out of the good treasures of a man's heart, he brings forth good things. The heart is spiritual. Yes. But how do you get it out? You have to speak because you believe, therefore, you speak. Yes. Yeah, you know what? You the Bible. Come on in here. Yeah. Come on. Ooh. Help us in this Ooh. word, okay? Take that for your word of faith. Yes. We believe, therefore, we speak. Yes. So what do I do? You heard me. What I, I sit there and I read the word. But as I start to read it, it's, it's something carnal. But what happens is you start off in the flesh and you end up in the spirit. Mm -hmm. You start off in the flesh, then you snap. All of a sudden, you're looking up 30 minutes later, you end up in the spirit trying to figure out what happened. Now you can't stop. You literally went into a vacuum of the spirit. You got drawn out into the spiritual world. You just don't know it because you're still conscious that you're in your room. Amen. This is good. We believe, therefore, we speak. Yes. We believe, therefore, we speak. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Yes. But if you don't have it in your heart, there's nothing to speak. Mm -mm -mm. And even if you speak it, the spiritual world knows it's not true. So you say, rise up and walk, and they just look at you. You say, come out! And they just... The spiritual world knows you ain't got it like that. Mm. 
Why? Dang. They know who's true and who's not. Yes. Second Corinthians four and thirteen. What's Second Corinthians four and thirteen? Is that we believe that what we speak? So you start in the flesh and you end in the spirit. I was teaching the state trooper officer called the other day. I said, this is what you do. That's what it is. That's what I thought. Thank you. Yeah. So I would tell him that said, take this specific scripture. I won't say the scripture I gave him because that was exclusive to something he was dealing with. So I said, I want you to take this specific passage, three verses. You're going to read it. What's going to happen is you're going to start off in the flesh. You're going to just read it. I said, do that for 30 minutes. I said, somewhere around the 20 minute mark, something's going to happen. And all of a sudden, things are going to change. You're going to feel a little bit different. Don't stop. When you feel a little bit different, keep reading. You're going to find yourself moving on to the other side. and you're going to Don't resist it when you move to the other side. Continue to read. It's going to move from your conscious mind to your subconscious mind. When it's inside of your subconscious mind, there it is now truly yours. The conscious mind only functions based upon awareness and events. So you could then say you're dealing with something and now you want to somebody in the hospital or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And you're like, I'm going to go raise them up. But the problem is that's in your conscious mind. Your subconscious, that ain't truly what you believe. Because mm -hmm. your subconscious hasn't been programmed with the word of God. Mm -hmm. You've never had time under duration within the spirit. Mm -hmm. You've never had the meditation in your mouth. Yes. Mm -hmm. You don't have anything in your mouth but Nicki, Nicki Minaj, Cardi B, Instagram, and every other thing. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. But in this mouth, it's, it's filled with the word of God. Amen. My children would say, man, we want to. We want to start to begin to prophesy. Okay, good. Well, now it's time to get the word in your mouth. Until you have that, we have nothing to talk about. Until you have that, we have nothing to discuss. What did he tell? What did he tell Joshua? Find that for me. Moses, thy servant Moses is dead. Go get that for me, John. See, look, see, listen. Carl, boy. He asked me, he said, how do I become a spiritual son? I said, I'm going to teach you how to grace, how to find grace, give. Yes. And I don't tell people to give. He said, how do I find, I said, do it and watch what happens. He's literally transforming like this. Yes. Leaps and bounds beyond people that have been in church forever. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> hey, bless you, Tyree. You got it? Yeah. I want you to go from Moses, my Moses, my servant is dead. And take your time when you read it. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, yeah. saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan. You and all this people to the land which I am given to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your feet will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. From the wilderness into this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very concur, very concur, uh, concur, mm. very uh, courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. 
Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. All right, that's what I wanted. So Moses, my servant, is dead. Joshua of Nun, I'm calling you to do this. Take the children over the Jordan. Do this, do that, do this, do that. And then he says what? This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Yes. Then he says, meditate in it therein day and night. You're letting things go out of your mouth when they're supposed to stay here until it's inside of your heart. Mm. So he says what? Let it stay in your mouth. It shall not depart your mouth. So everybody speaking a bunch of stuff, blah, 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 blah. But the word ain't in their mouth. Mm. He says, do not let this depart from your mouth. Yes. This book of the law, do not let it depart from your mouth. Meditate therein it day and night. What he's saying is, don't speak it until it's truly a part of who you are. When it's truly a part of who you are, I will back you. When it's truly a part of who you are, I will back you. And if you understand Joshua, he was deep in ways we don't understand. Deep in ways and ways. Can we figure out we can get the chat back? Let me see. I messed it. Hold on, you guys. So, meditate in it day and night. But before he says meditate, he says, do not let it depart from your mouth. Why? It has to enter you and become such a part of you before you release it out. Because once you release it out, that which is true meditation, God backs. The haphazard stuff, oh, I just name it and claim it. You don't believe that. You're just saying it, but you don't believe it. Because in order for you to believe it, it has to be inside of the heart. And in order for it to be inside of the heart, it has to be something that has been sealed inside of your mouth that you have meditated upon it day and night, day and night, day and night until it becomes a part of who you are deep in your subconscious. Yes. Deep in your subconscious. You understand? Yeah. So then Joshua is deep in ways we don't understand. Joshua then what? Takes him across the body of water just like Moses did. Nobody ever give him credit for it. We'll never talk about it. Joshua split water just like Moses. Bop. Carries him on through. Then Joshua says, you know what? Sun stand still. Through the entire situation. I don't even know what we want to call that. Cosmos. Whatever we want to call that. He threw that into disarray. We got people that got leap year birthdays now because of one man. Mm. One man threw off the entire rotation. Now let me teach you about spiritual function. One man says, son, stand still. Mm -hmm. The problem is the sun doesn't move. Mm -hmm. The earth rotates around the sun. <laughs> the earth rotates around the sun. It's not the other way around. The sun doesn't rotate around us. We be barbecue. Mm -hmm. The earth rotates around the sun. He says, son, stand still. Even when he missed it, the spiritual realm functioned and obeyed him. Mm -hmm. Remember I told you, hey, man, don't go mess with Jezebel. But if you built in the spirit, the spirit will respond and back you. You understand? Yes. Literally. We got people now with leap year birthdays because one man said, this word is not going to depart from my mouth until it is deep inside of my heart. I believe, therefore I speak. Sun stand still. You want to talk about a renewed mind? That book of the law has to stay inside of your mouth until it's deep inside of your heart. That's called programming. Programming. That's what meditation is, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. Meditation is literally programming. I am programming myself unto this thing. Mm -hmm. And once I program myself to this, my wife, you probably used to hate it. Stop talking like that. Mm -hmm. 
I actually despise anybody who talks crazy is going to have a hard time being around me. I let it pass for a little bit and I just whatever. But anybody who talks crazy is going to have a hard time being around me. Why do you think I don't get on the phone a lot? Mm. Why? You're going to mess up my meditation. Mm. You're going to mess up what I'm planning to say in the future. Why? I have certain things that are not departing from my mouth also because I am meditating there and day and night, day and night, day and night, day and night, day and night. So then when I get a call to Natasha in the hospital, it's nothing to speak it because it's actually in me. Yes. Why? Out of the good treasures of my heart, I have something to pull out of there. Yes. You understand? Yes. I have something to pull out of there. But it's not just a vain, empty word when I pull it out. It's backed by all the hosts of heaven. Yes. Yes. Most people speak in this empty air. Come out. You know what to say, but it's empty because you have no meditation. Mm. You know what to say. So you well equipped mm. to say the right things. But you have no meditation. Mm. You guys, hold on. I'm going to try to see if I can get y'all back in the chat. Let's do this. Everybody good? Mm -hmm. I, I want to use the restroom for, for two minutes if that's okay. Yes. YouTube, are y'all good? Are you good? Okay. And we're going to get the chat back up while I'm using the restroom. Let's cut the music on and put put the video on for a few and let, let me take a rest for a second. When I'm through it, it went right over your head Most of them don't even hear what he said I'ma slow it, I'ma say it again This time please read it, don't leave it on red The kingdom of God is at hand He's repent of your sins The man with a pen, yeah Talking to God while he's writing it down It was worse cause they wanted him dead, yeah What pushes a man who go talk about a life that he's never seen and never led, yeah What pushes a man who go speak with his chest No one ops in the crowd while him dead, yeah Just please pick up that book, yeah It's never regular, I'm on the schedule, yeah I know that it is a level up, I'm always messing up So are the people in it I got no time for no games, yeah All they be selling is pain, yeah The hand that you give, watch them take it You made it, you thought you were safer All the money you making them stack But you, you ain't getting that back So you sit, let the demons attack While I sit with my peace, let them fight on my behalf If it's for me, then who be against me? No one, no one If it's for me, then who be against me? No one, no one If it's for me, then who be against me? Time and I didn't know me. I was in a place I was fighting demons. Got me right, told me leave them. You can't go back to that season. You can't go back to that season.
Look. If it's for me, then who be against me? No one, no one. If it's for me, then who be against me? No one, no one. If it's for me, then who be against me? No one, no one. If it's for me, then who be against me? No one, no one. If it's for me, I'm running it back. On the field, all I know is attack. I'ma catch it, don't care about the cash. We ahead, we don't need no advance. When I threw it, it went right of your head. Most of them don't even hear what he said. I'ma slow it, I'ma say it again. This time, please read it, don't leave it on red. The kingdom of God is at hand. Your pen of your sin. The man with a pen, yeah. Talking to God while he's writing it down. It was worse cause they wanted him dead, yeah. What pushes a man who go talk about a life that he's never seen and never led, yeah. What pushes a man who go speak with his chest, no one ups in the crowd with him dead, yeah. Just please pick up that book, yeah. It's never regular, I'm on the schedule, yeah I know that it is a level up, I'm always messing up So are the people in it I got no time for no games, yeah All they be selling is pain, yeah The hand that you give, watch them take it You made it, you thought you were safer All the money you making them stack But you, you ain't getting that bad So you sit let the demons attack While I sit with my peace, let them fight on my behalf If it's for me, then who be against me? No one, no one If it's for me, then who be against me? No one, no one If it's for me, then who be against me? Time and I didn't know me. I was in a place I was fighting demons. Got me right, told me leave them. You can't go back to that season. You can't go back to that season. Dang 
on him. I'm going to let you know you answered your own question. You got it, boy. Yeah. I want you to go back and read it, but you write on it. Yeah. There's different depths. That's why some was there to pick off the surface. Some was there to get and others took root. If it's going to take root, it has to be in the subconscious. Mm-hmm. It has to be in the subconscious. Now, last week when we were teaching Travis Sexual Sin, God did something special for us. Y'all know I love my grapes. And we didn't realize it until after the fact. <laughs> I'm asking for the group. <laughs> Take one for the team. We didn't realize it until after the fact. But it wasn't until one of my brothers called me and said, hey, man, what kind of grapes was them? I said, what are you talking about, man? He said, man, we watched you eat them the entire teaching and they never ran out. I said, what? He said, we watched you reach them the entire time. And it never ran out. And I said, you sure? So then I had to come back and say, hey, did, did you put some, some grapes in there when I stepped away to use the bathroom? They was like, no. My children were away and then went to sleep, so they didn't either. I said, did you put some in there? Hey, Quentin, are you saying speak up? I want to make sure I'm understanding. Do we need to turn the volume up? Is everybody good? Can y'all hear us? Give me a thumbs up if y'all can hear us good. I don't want to. I want to make sure we're good. So YouTube, if you can hear us well, or if the audio is on the same par as what it was, put a thumbs up in the chat for me. Let's get a, let's get a cut. I want I want enough of them to know that it's working across a vast majority of everybody's devices. Oh, 
Okay. Hey, is that better? And we're trying our best to make sure we got good volume for y'all. If that's better, give me a thumbs up. Quentin, please. No apologies, Quentin. You're the sound engineer. You're helping us have good quality. We need your grace. It's no problem. I want to make sure everybody's having a good experience while we're working through this. And if that means just slowing down for a second and fixing it, that's okay. The beat of the new music stirs me up, but I can't deny I miss God bless me. <laughs> we'll, we'll close out with God bless me. But we're in a new season. <laughs> Got to move with God. Okay, Quentin, I want to I wanted to make sure. I, I hope this is better for everybody. But what I was saying was someone brought it to my attention. We, we I was chomping on these grapes, yet the entire time it didn't run out. I was unaware. I was just eating them and grateful for them. <laughs> However, I would just eat my little few here and there. He said, no, nah, man, we watched you. And we watched them never run out. I said, man. And then my water never ran out. Mm -hmm. No, your water went to half and then you filled back up. Say it so they can hear you. <laughs> That's good right there. The water had went that he was drinking it. And we, we fast forward, we, we, we rewind, just to make sure that someone, we asked everyone in the room, did you refill the water? This was before he took any bathroom break or anything like that, where we go off camera and there could be an opportunity to be refilled. You see the water, it goes down, it goes down, it got all the way down to half, and then about uh, maybe an hour or so in, it is back up to full. Come on, Ashley. <laughs> yes. But so God, God, God was kind to us, is what I'm saying. Yes. And when I say that to say, when I say to like, hey, God is with us. Yes. I understand that I'm not looking with my physical eye. Amen. So when I say things like. Hey, go use the bathroom. I'm not listening with my physical ear. Mm -hmm. But I have a thought that doesn't belong to me. It's the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. I have an eye that's not my eye. It's the eye of the Lord. Yes. I have a spirit that's not my spirit, but it's one spirit with him. Hallelujah. You understand? Not a familiar spirit. Not a familiar spirit. Come on. One spirit. It's a Thank big difference. You, I am one spirit with the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So when we talk about oh, look at my daughter Jasmine, the thirst quencher, well, <laughs> amen, <laughs> I love you. So what we were talking about prior to it was programming. I don't know, but if we weren't, we're going to talk about programming. And in order for the mind to be renewed, it has to be programmed. Mm -hmm. And if it's going to be programmed, it has to be programmed in a way that moves beyond the conscious mind and deep into the subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is, at times of calamity, at times of downfall, at times of distress, at times of heartache, whatever life can bring you away. What do you say? Many are the afflictions of the righteous. So there's days of affliction. Jesus said that take heart because he's overcome it all. Paul said, hey, having to stand in the evil day. So we know all these things will come about us. Mm -hmm. Evil days, calamity, destruction. We can't avoid it. However, what happens is we default to our base setting. Mm -hmm. Base setting. And your base setting is only based upon what you have programmed on the inside. What you have programmed on the inside. Which means that if you don't have the word of God programmed deep into your subconscious, in the moment of calamity, that's not what's going to come out. Mm. You think it will. But if your meditation has not been the word of his law abiding in your mouth, and you meditating therein day and night until it becomes a part of your subconscious and then you speak... Mm -hmm. In the day of calamity, you will curse God. In the day of calamity, your faith will fail you. Jesus knew he had to say things like, I'm praying, I'm praying for you that your faith will not fail you. Because he knew it was a possibility. 
he knew it was completely in the realm of possibility, which is why he had to say it. Yes. So when we talk about renewing the mind, you have to get the word of God into your subconscious deeply. But this requires programming. And in order to program something, you have to put in the right code. So you can't sit there and just, oh man, let me just read the word internally and listen to yourself within yourself. No, you have to speak the word while you're reading. Yeah. Kind of like when I taught, a lot of words got not taught about Abraham, right? Yeah. You don't come up with that stuff just sitting there reading to yourself. Yeah. If you notice everything I've taught for the most part, like, man, I never knew that was there. I never knew that was there. I never knew that was there. Why? I got years upon years upon years upon years upon years upon years and I could continually go on of that book of the law being in my mouth and me meditating there and day and night. So now when I speak, it's what's there, right? But when you look at Job, he was programmed deep into a subconscious. He said he lost his sons. He lost, well, he lost his cattle, lost his livestock, lost his possessions, lost his children. What did he say? The thing that I have feared most has come upon me, which means he already knew this was in the realm of possibility. The thing that I have feared has now come to my doorstep. The thing that I was afraid of has now overtaken me. And he says, naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will return. May the name of the Lord be blessed forever. And he worshiped upon his staff. Why? His subconscious was programmed in such a way that he would never falter away from God. But if you don't have the word of God deeply programmed inside of there by way of your meditations, you don't stand a chance. Let alone talking about healing, miracles, prophecy, all the other stuff, right? Let alone all the other stuff. Allow that word, we talk about renewing the mind, allow that word to be in you. Let it wash over you. You understand? Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, they understood. We know that our God is able to deliver us. Can you find it for me? When... Ananiah, Mishael, Azariah, when they're sentenced to the fire and then they bless the king, I believe. Find it for me, please. Hey, Patricia Brown, I love you. God bless you. I was going to, I told my wife I was going to have her jump on here with me towards the end, but... We're, in all seriousness, we're running out of time. So, you think you'd be good for next week or week after? Next week is fine. Let's see how our travels are and then we'll, we'll figure it out. Okay. But I want yeah. this time. Let me know you're good, John. But like I said, while he's finding that, I said that in the beginning, now understanding the depths of the mind and understanding that the way that you function with thought, that every thought is, every thought that exists has an influence, whether clean or unclean, light or dark, every thought has an influence that brings it about. Now you have more understanding of why the helmet of salvation is so important. You understand? Yeah, mm -hmm. That helmet, what'd you say? I say yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. My phone was just listening to what I was saying, trying to figure it out. You got it? Yeah, I got it. You got it? All right, let's read that for me. Therefore, at the time, certain therefore at the time certain Chaldeans came forward and accused the Jews. They spoke and said to King Nebuchadnezzar, "O King, live forever! You, O King, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psalteries and symphonies." with all kinds of music, shall fall down and worship the gold image. 
And whoever does not fall down in worship should be cast into the midst of a burning fierce furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the providence of Babylon. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, these men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the gold image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in rage and fury, gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? Now, if you are ready, at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and sapphire, and symphonies, with all kinds of music, and you fall down and worship the image which I have made. Good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of the burning fierce furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you from my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king of old Nebuchadnezzar, We have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fierce furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor we will worship the gold image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression on his face changed toward Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning fierce furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fierce furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed, killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fierce furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he arose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselor, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king, look, he answered, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar, are you Listen to what I just said. Men who don't know God, yet they can perceive the likeness of him. Mm. Yes. You know God. How much more so you should be able to perceive his likeness? Mm. Mm. How much more so should you be able to see? Amen? Yes. But when I talk about the subconscious and the renewing of the mind, these men said, O king, we know that our God can deliver us. You could just pull the, the sub up some maybe that might be what it says. You took the game down. Oh, okay. Okay, y'all just give us a second. We're going to fix it. Did you put it back where it was? All right, so I hope that helps. Y'all give me one second to make sure we got it right. Yeah. 
They said it's bad. All right, Jenny, you can unmute it and bring us back. Hopefully that's better. We just had a small tweak we had to make. So let me know if that works. I'm waiting for my sound engineer. Once my son Quentin says it's good, I'll pick back up. So Quentin, let us know if it's good or not. Okay, perfect. It says, thank you. Is it safe to say meditation? Oh, I went by so fast I couldn't see it. But. Is it safe to say that meditation in the word is co consistent repetition of the word by mouth? Meditation, it's, it's multifaceted, so I can't limit it to just that. Meditation is in thought. Meditation is in speech. Meditation is also in imagination. Imagination being the highest of them all. Yes. However... If you're with us in the mastermind, you want to work because we're going to deal with meditation. So shameless plug there. <laughs> right. So, yeah, you could join us in the fruitful tree mastermind. We'll go with those kind of things. But meditation is one of the things that is so deep. But those kind of things we cannot say openly because niggas ain't going to understand. You understand what I'm saying? Excellent. So John had read Daniel. But what the point I was making was that. The subconscious mind, we talk about renewing the mind. These young men were programmed in such a way that they said, what? We know that God can deliver us. However, even if he doesn't, we will only worship him. We know he can do it. But even if he does not, we will only worship him. O king, may you live forever, but we will only worship our God. We will not bow to any other God. That's meditation. That's the subconscious being programmed in such a way that it would stand and endure anything. It would stand and endure anything. Let me tell you something. He said that the nations will rage against the Lord and his Christ. I said that earlier. Today. I said, hey, we're enjoying this right now, but one day we won't enjoy this. I'm fully aware that God has me public for a season. He kept me unpleasant for a long season for a reason, and I'm fully aware that he has me public for a short season. And one day we won't be able to gather the way we do. We won't be able to interact the way we do. And it will be based truly upon what you have in your subconscious that determines whether you will fall away from God or not. Because it's cool until they start striking people in the face. It's cool until they start telling people you can't eat. It's cool until they start separating mothers from daughters and fathers from sons then will determine whether you have a mind renewed in such a way that you would be like the Hebrew boys that though he slay me, yet will I trust him. That's meditation. That you have saw the day afar off before it ever came and knew I will serve God no matter what. But you, if you've never seen that day, you don't know what you'll do. You understand? If you've never seen that day, you don't know what you will do. So everyone say, I'll never do that. You don't even have any meditation to know what you're doing in the day of calamity. You've never even programmed yourself for what would it be like in the day that I suffer a thing that I can't imagine. What will I say? And I've suffered sufferings. And the first thing I always say is nothing will ever sway me from serving my God. But why? I've already been there and existed in a day of calamity. Doesn't change the heartache. Doesn't change the sorrow. Doesn't change the feeling. But I'm planted and rooted on the firm rock, Christ, which is my salvation. He is my anchor that holds and grips. But that's come through meditation. That's come from my subconscious being programmed in such a way that I will never move. I'm anchored. You understand? Like these young men. We know God can deliver us. But even if he doesn't. King, may you live forever, but we'll never bow and serve another God. 
And I'm telling you now, all of these things help with prophetic ministry. They help with the dreams. They help with the visions. They help with all the spiritual stuff I teach. But the thing that's most important if you learn anything is serve God until the end. Because only he who endures to the end can be saved. Not he who endures until it gets rough. No, he who endures to the end shall be saved. So if they cast his body away, I'll live forever. No matter what. I'd rather choose to live with him. But my subconscious, my mind has been programmed in such a way that nothing can move me. You understand what I'm saying? So my thoughts are no longer my thoughts. My thoughts are his thoughts. That I too would suffer outside with him. Paul went on to talk about that very mind. That just as he suffered, we too would do the same and that mind would be in us. So when we talk about how would you endure the day, you don't know until you have the mind of Christ. You don't know until you have God's thoughts. And I'm telling you that most people deal within thoughts that are influenced by other things. You need to ask God for his thoughts. What do he say? My ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. You understand? That's what happened with Nebuchadnezzar. When Nebuchadnezzar has the dream, he says that the thoughts that came to you while you were on your bed. Remember I said thoughts are all influenced. Remember I said that, right? Now, of course, people, the unspiritual people say that thing, they don't know. Nebuchadnezzar, they said, the thoughts that came to me while I was on my bed. And then Daniel began to interpret those thoughts. These thoughts that you have came from God. So remember, I told you dream and thoughts move together. Let me read it to you. Uh, and then we'll end here. And in the second year of the reign of in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams wherewith his spirit was troubled and his sleep break from him. And then uh, I'm scrolling all the way down so we can skip all the other stuff. That they would desire mercies of the God of heaven. This is verse 18 concerning this secret. That Daniel and his fellow should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then was the secret, <clears throat> excuse me, revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Now this right here helps you because people don't understand prophetic ministry. So then the moment someone tells somebody a dream, they're like, oh, that's a familiar spirit. <clears throat> Daniel right here in his sleep receives a vision of another man's dream. Full details of another man's dream. Not, no, not that God came and sat down and gave it. No. In his dream, he receives another man's dream. Mm -hmm. But so, you listen to these people. They'll convince you that's a familiar spirit. They'll convince you that's witchcraft. And they'll trick you out of spiritual things. Yes. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And then I skip down 22. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might and has made known unto me. Now what we desired of thee, for thou has known, for thou has now made known unto us the king's matter. Now he said what? He thanked God because God gave them what they desired. They never prayed for it. He gathered guys together. He said, guys, let us let us desire the mercies of God. Let us desire the mercies of God. And then in the night, God revealed the secret to them. They didn't even pray about it. Now, tomorrow I'm going to be teaching about prayer. But if you truly understand, if you can capture God's heart, you don't. There's certain things you don't have to pray about. There's things that you don't have to pray about. All you have to do is learn how to set your desires. Meditation. All right. All right. Now I'm trying to skip down to the last verse. So then we can get out of here. Okay, this is verse 36. This is the dream and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Hold on, no, hold on. This 27, excuse me. Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, the secret which the king hath demanded, cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers show unto the king? But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. 
Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. As for thee, O king, thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed. So remember I told you thoughts are influenced. He tells them here, the thoughts came into your mind while you were on your bed. Not that you thought it, they came into your mind. If something comes into you, it's brought to you. These thoughts came to you while you were on your bed. What should come to pass hereafter that he revealed the secrets and then, but as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living, but for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation to the king that thou mightst knowest the thoughts of thy heart. Here, he, remember I told you thoughts are influenced. The thoughts come to him while he is sleeping, but they're not his thoughts. Those thoughts are God's thoughts for what God has planned for him. So if you want to know what's planned for you, you need God's thoughts. Yes. It's kind of like when I took the YouTube journey, I already know the journey. Why? This was God's thoughts, not mine's. So if it's God's thoughts, that means the spirit can reveal it to me because the spirit has a mind also. So we're talking about the subconscious mind net, but at another time I have to teach you about the mind of the spirit because the spirit has the mind and the spirit has an eye and it can see and it has thoughts. The spirit has thoughts also because it has a mind. But he tells him here in Nebuchadnezzar that these thoughts came into your mind in visions on your head upon your bed. I will make known to you what God has planned for you. So what? This was God bringing his thoughts upon Nebuchadnezzar. God knows our thoughts and he knows, excuse me, God's thoughts have his plans for us. But you have to have the mind of Christ to understand that. You have to have the insight to understand what is God thinking towards me? For I know the thoughts that I have towards you. Plans to prosper you. That's what just happened with Nebuchadnezzar. God brought his thoughts to them and then gave him the plans of what I'm going to do with you. If you read the whole discourse, that's what it's about. The thoughts came unto him, but he couldn't understand them. Daniel gets the wisdom and the secret is revealed. He says, this is what God has planned for you. Thoughts are about God's plans towards us. But if you don't know God's thoughts, you don't know what he has planned for you. If you don't know God's thoughts, if you don't have his mind, you're walking around aimless and you have no idea what God has planned for you. For I know the thoughts that I have towards you. Plans to prosper you and to bring you into expected end. To give you a hope in the future, right? That's Jeremiah. Everybody loves that. The problem is they were in captivity when he said that. So we quote it and we take it separate from what's actually happening. For I know the pl I know the thoughts that I have towards you, plans for you, plans to prosper you, to give you a hope of future and an expected end. While they're in captivity. But then if you continue to read, he says, while you're in captivity, I want you to plant. I want you to take cattle, produce, have children, because when I bring you out, this is what I'm going to do with you. God's thoughts always have plans with it, but you don't have the roadmap if you don't have his mind. You understand? So we're going to continue this at another time with God's grace. We'll pick this back up. Somebody asked about uh, the thing. You can go to fruitfulmastermind.com. Pin that in the thing for me. Fruitfulmastermind.com. I, uh, I don't want to have to. I don't want to do that again. So fruitfulmastermind.com. But you too, were you blessed? We'll pick this back up and continue that another time. But if you listen to it, receive grace, there's enough to get you where God has you, where God wants you to go. Amen. Well, I love you. I bless you. And for those who will be with the mastermind tomorrow, I look forward to being with you. It's going to be a good time. God bless you, YouTube. Talk to you soon.
God help me, what the fuck, yeah, can't do this alone, God help me, God, whoa, God help me, can't do this alone, God help me, what the fuck, yeah, God help me, can't do this alone, God help me, what the fuck, yeah, God bless me, can't do this alone, God bless me, yeah. I ain't coming off the mountain till I get my blessing And I don't know where it is, so I watch where I'm stepping And I'm walking with this peace, but it's never aggression Cause once upon a time, had to learn a little lesson Read it, in the holy book, I know the reverend said it You're misunderstood, but if you read it and let it Open up the truth, you would find that it would open up everything inside of you But everybody wants to be put on How you even making all these songs? Like how you get the money, how you get the fame But why don't you ask what's the cash behind the diamond rings though I pay attention, I'm listening to your lingo Who I serve, he got eyes like an ego He see everything I promise you won't get away with not anything no. Yeah, <laughs> but that's a cold hard truth I'm being honest, don't ever think that you know my mood He ordered my steps so I know that I will never lose I'm covered in unseen blood Like I said, I true, you can't see it it's on me There's something different about the kids Something funny Maybe if I switch my jersey They would love me But what does it matter If he ain't rooting for me God help me What the fuck yeah Can't do this alone God help me God help me Can't do this alone God help me What the fuck yeah God help me Can't do this alone God help me What the fuck yeah Bless me, yeah. Help me, what the fuck, yeah Can't do this alone, God help me God, whoa, God help me Can't do this alone, God help me What the fuck, yeah God help me Can't do this alone, God help me What the fuck, yeah God bless me Can't do this alone, God bless me, yeah God help me, what the fuck, yeah, can't do this alone, God help me, God, whoa, God help me.
help me Can't do this alone God help me What the uh, Yeah God help me Can't do this alone God help me What the uh, Yeah God bless me Can't do this alone God bless me Yeah I ain't coming off the moment till I get my blessing And I don't know where it is, so I watch where I'm stepping And I'm walking with this peace, but it's never aggression Cause once upon a time, had to learn a little lesson Read it, in the holy book, I know the reverend said it You're misunderstood, but if you read it and let it Open up the truth, you would find that it would open up everything inside of you But everybody wants to be put on How you even making all these songs? Like how you get the money, how you get the fame But why don't you ask what's the catch behind the diamond rings though I pay attention, I'm listening to your lingo Who I serve, he got eyes like an ego He see everything I promise you won't get away with not anything no. Yeah, <laughs> but that's a cold hard truth I'm being honest, don't ever think that you know my moves He ordered my steps so I know that I will never lose I'm covered in unseen blood Like I said, I true, you can't see it But it's on me There's something different about the kids Something funny Maybe if I switch my jersey They would love me But what does it matter If he ain't rooting for me God help me What the uh, Yeah Can't do this alone God help me Cause once upon a time, had to learn a little lesson Read it, in the 
I'm holy, but God know the reverend said it. You're misunderstood, but if you read it and let it open up the truth, you would find that it would open up everything inside of you. But everybody wants to be put on. How you even making all these songs? Like how you get the money, how you get the fame? But why don't you ask what's the catch behind the diamond rings, though? I pay attention, I'm listening to your lingo. Who I serve, he got eyes like an ego. He see everything. I promise you won't get away without anything, no. Yeah. <laughs> That's a cold hot truth. I'm being honest, don't ever think that you know my mood. He ordered my steps so I know that I will never lose. I'm covered in unseen blood. Like I said, I true, you can't see it. But it's on me. There's something different about the kids, something funny. Maybe if I switch my jersey, they would love me. But what does it matter if he ain't rooting for me? God help me. What the uh, yeah, can't do this alone. God help me. What's the catch behind the diamond rings, though? I pay attention, I'm listening to your lingo. Who I serve, he got eyes like an ego. He see everything. I promise you won't get away without anything, no. Yeah. <laughs> but 
that's a cold hot truth I'm being honest, don't ever think that you know my moves He ordered my steps so I know that I will never lose I'm covered in unseen blood Like I said, I true, you can't see it But it's on me There's something different about the kids, something funny Maybe if I switch my jersey, they would love me But what does it matter if he ain't rooting for me? God help me What the, yeah, I can't do this alone Yeah.